<laughs> I hope you're able to go, inshallah. What year did you go Hajj? 2009. 2009? You went after they made the change. The, the change of the, sa the place of Sa'i. No, I didn't have it. Yeah, for me, I went before it. It's a surface, brother. Okay, where did we end up? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulullah, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla, wa anta ya hayu ya qayyum, تجعل الحزن إن شئت سهلا اللهم ارزقنا نيات خالصة لوجهك الكريم لله تعالى الله تعالى said in the Quran we were still talking about uh, about the belief, uh, the testification of faith and the things that pertain to it. So Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ نَقِيرًا Which means that anyone, whether a male or female, who does good deeds while uh, he, is a, he or she is a believer, they'll go to paradise and they will not, or none of their uh, rewards will be overlooked or they will not lose any of their reward. So in this verse Allah Ta'ala mentioned that the one who does a good deed and they're believers then they will get complete reward and they will not lose any of the, the reward that they, that they had done. The author said, as for the one who grows up as a Muslim while believing in the testification of faith, it is not a condition for him to utter the two shahadas to be considered a believer. He is considered a Muslim uh, if, even if he does not say the testification of faith, uh, the explanation, if one is born to a Muslim parent, then this person is judged as a Muslim when this person becomes pubescent while believing in his heart the testification of faith. Without uttering it, he is judged as a Muslim, even if he never uttered the testification of faith. When he becomes pubescent, based on his parents, he is judged as a Muslim. Of course, he did not have a belief that contradicted the Shahada. As long as he did not have a belief 
contradicting the testification of faith. In that case, if he had a belief that contradicted, he became pubescent, and he uh, had a belief that he likened Allah to the creation, he thought one of the creations is Allah, then this person is not a believer. As for the one, he has the correct belief in his heart. He uh, grew up as a Muslim. He became pubescent. He is still judged as a Muslim, even if he doesn't utter the testification of faith, although he's obligated to utter it. This is so because the parent of this person is a Muslim. So he's judged a Muslim, even if he or she does not utter the testification of faith. In Arabic, it is called Muslim bittiba'iyah or bittaba'iyah, a Muslim by association before puberty. There are more details, and we're going to go into it, inshallah ta'ala, in the coming lessons. The author, may Allah have mercy on him, said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said. So this type of thing is called hadith qudsi. When the Prophet والسلام, said that Allah said, then this is Hadith Qudsi. And that Hadith, when he said that Allah said, it is not a verse of the Quran. So this would be called a Hadith Qudsi. He said uh, that Allah said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ which means there are no good deeds that a slave might do for my sake better than fulfilling the obligations narrated by al-Bukhari. Allah Ta'ala said what means that uh, when my slave will get, attain high status, nothing like he would attain high status by doing the obligations. Nothing is equal to the obligations. So, uh, the, this, uh, he said what means that my slave would get closer to me in meaning, ma'nawi, not physical, uh, with doing the obligations, with no other deed, that will, he will get, attain that status like he would by doing the obligations. So, the obligations, doing the fara'id, has the highest status and highest rank. The explanation, the statements which the Prophet وسلم, said are of two types. One type is called Hadith, Hadith Qudsi, and the other type is called Hadith Nabawi. A Hadith Qudsi is a Hadith which the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah said, then the Prophet mentions something which is not a verse of the Qur'an. Such a hadith is, differs from the Qur'an in several ways. This, uh, this term that he said, that Allah said, it differs from the verse of the Qur'an in several ways. <clears throat> so you cannot say Allah said in the Qur'an, and then change a few words. Hadith Qudsi can be narrated according to um, meaning. The Quran, you cannot do that. You cannot say, uh, uh, recite something and then say, this is what Allah said. And even the, <clears throat> carrying the same meaning, you change some words to another word. Even if it has the same meaning. You cannot do that with the Qur'an. The Qur'an can only be narrated as it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. It cannot be changed. Hadith Qudsi can be narrated according to its meaning. So that differs from the Qur'an in that regard. You cannot, um, the Hadith Qudsi also, the Qur'an can be recited in the prayer. When you recite the Qur'an, you are uh, worshipping Allah in the prayer. This is considered a worship. We are ordered to recite in the Qur'an, the, to recite from the Qur'an in the prayer. 
the hadith Qudsi is not like that. It is not recited in the prayer. So one cannot read this hadith. After he recites Surah Al-Fatiha, he recites this hadith. He cannot do that. As for the Quran, we're ordered to recite it in the prayer. We are rewarded for that. It is a worship to do that. Also the Quran, another, in another way that it differs from the Hadith Qudsi, the Quran and Hadith Qudsi, is that the Quran was revealed as a miracle. It was revealed, it's called I'jaz. No one can produce something like it. There's a challenge in the Quran and no one can produce something like it. The Hadith Qudsi, it was not revealed as a miracle. The Quran was revealed as a miracle. So those are the aspects that Hadith Qudsi differ from the Quran. So the Prophet والسلام, is conveying from Allah without it being a part, a verse of the Quran. In this Hadith, it is clearly mentioned that the best thing seeking the reward from Allah is to do the obligations. Not any other deed is like the obligations. This is also mentioned in the Quran, but in this hadith is explicitly mentioned that mentioned. This is why some scholars said the reward of the obligation is greater than the reward of the optional, the nafil. This is also clear, this also clearly indicates then one should not be occupied from doing the obligations by doing something optional. The optional should not preoccupy you from the obligation. If this obligation you have to do at a particular time, and the time would be over, and you occupied yourself during that time with something optional, even a sunnah, a recommended matter, then this is a way of corruption and misguidance. What it, uh, the Shaykh, he included in, some, in several of his books that nations were destroyed before because of two things. One is that um, one is they uh, preoccupied themselves with the optional while neglecting the obligation. And the other one is, is making the organs be busy without the, the heart, uh, with, while the heart is absent. These are, these are two uh, reasons why many nations were destroyed in the past. So we don't want to be amongst them. You want to do a deed while your heart is in that deed, that good deed. Uh, doing it, meaning doing it in sincerity. And uh, doing it only for the sake of Allah. And the, you don't want to leave out the ob neglecting the obligation while occupying yourself with the sunnah. Because when you do that, you're sinful. And you will not get reward for that, that recommended act anyways. So one should not occupy his time with doing the optional in a way that he neglects doing or does not do the obligation. If the nafil makes him leave out the obligation, then this, this type of person, he's not on the straight path. If he makes himself busy with the recommended matter in a way that he does not do the obligation, then this is not the correct path. From this it is known that if one makes, uh, that if one has to make up obligatory prayers, so he has makeup to do, qada, and he doesn't fulfill the obligations of making up those prayers, rather he, he preoccupies himself with making dhikr, or reciting the Quran, or doing other uh, acts that are considered good in the religion to do, but in this case, it would not be good to do. Rather, it would be sinful. SubhanAllah. So, 
he is not entitled to pray sunnah instead of making up those prayers. He cannot spend his time making dhikr instead of making up those prayers. So if he thinks, let me say 1,000 times, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, instead of making the prayers, he is sinful for that and he does not get reward for his dhikr. Why? Because one does not get reward for committing a sin. Why did he neglect praying the makeup prayers? Is it, if it was because to occupy himself with making dhikr, then this nafil, this optional, uh, occupied his time or prevented him from doing the obligation. In this case, it would be sinful. We're not saying if the person, let's say he had neglected, neglected to do, he has qada prayers to make up, and he's walking on the street, and he wants to make dhikr. So he says, La ilaha illallah, while he's making dhikr. It does not mean he's not getting reward for his dhikr. But if, he, if that optional act is preventing him from doing the obligation, then that's what is considered that it is, uh, he, will not, he will be sinful and he will not get reward for that. Because the one uh, does not get reward for committing a sin. Why did he neglect uh, doing the makeup prayers to occupy his time with an optional matter? Then it is sinful to do that optional act. So he does not get reward for that. On the other hand, if he had makeup prayers and he is walking on the street and he's making dhikr with his tongue, he gets reward for that dhikr. Because he's not leaving out the makeups to make this dhikr. So fulfilling the obligations raises the person to much higher ranks than fulfilling the recommended deeds which are not obligations. Imagine, you know these people exist. They have a beard, they wear the white clothes, they have the masbahat, and they don't know how to pray. They don't know how to fast. They make mistakes in their prayers and their fasting. So although their beard is a sunnah, they're wearing the white clothes a sunnah, doing the, the dhikr with the, with the beads is, is mustahab. In this case, he's neglecting the obligation and holding on to the sunnah. And this is not the correct path. May Allah Ta'ala make us follow the straight path. And the name of this book is Surat Al-Mustaqim, the straight path. So from this, it is known the corruption of some who call themselves Sufis, who say that we reached, of course, true Sufis, we're, we're not talking about true Sufis. Those true Sufis are people who are detached from this world. But these are Sufi claimers. These Sufi claimers say, we have reached such a state that we no longer need to do the obligations. They say our heart is so soft, it's so pure, that that's it. We don't have to do any more obligations. And this is not what the Prophet ﷺ taught. For sure. And this is kufr and blasphemy. The one who says that uh, obligations, no, no longer I have to do in the obligations. This is blasphemy that contradicts the Quran. So do not think that these people do not exist. They still exist. Some people who claim to be Sufis tell their followers, say 100 times, Istighfar, Astaghfirullah, 100 times, Salat al Nabi, 100 times, um, La ilaha illallah, tahleel, uh, or other dhikr. This is just an example. You know in the tariqah, the shaykh, he gives a certain dhikr to his student. And some of them, those people say, if you say this, then you get more reward than praying. And this is belying the religion, waliyadu billah. They mean by that you get more reward making those dhikr than praying. Whether this is fart or optional. In either case. Subhanallah. In the prayer, you have standing. You have takbir. You have reciting of the Quran. You're reciting the greatest verse of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. Then you recite other verses of the Quran. 
Then you have ruku' bowing in in uh, in submission to Allah. Then you have i'tidal. Then you also have sujood. And then you have statements of praise. So in the prayer, if you look at it, you have uh, standing, bowing, uh, standing in submission to Allah, bowing in submission to Allah, prostrating in submission to Allah, reciting from the Quran, reciting uh, dhikr, and other statements of dua, of praise. How would they say that reciting this dhikr is better than the prayer? This contradicts the religion. And he said we will mention the whole hadith. This hadith, we just mentioned part of it right now. Uh, we will mention the whole hadith in the next session, inshallah. The author said, believing that, one, that no one is God except Allah only is not enough if it is not associated with believing in Muhammad as the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Allah Ta'ala has ordered to believe in His Messenger. One has to believe in Allah and the believer has to uh, submit to whatever Allah ordered. And Allah Ta'ala has made it a condition for the belief, the belief in, the belief in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Ali Imran, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ قُلْ O Muhammad, tell them أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and obey the Messenger in belief that is and in other but first and foremost in belief فَإِن تَوَلَّا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn away, they reject فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah Ta'ala does not, does not accept the blasphemers. Meaning, they are blasphemers for doing this act, and Allah Ta'ala does not accept. Does not accept them. The author continued to say, that anyone who does not believe in Allah, and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a blasphemer and Allah does not accept such a person for his blasphemy. The one who says that both believers and non-believers are loved by Allah because Allah created them, this person is belying the Quran. You would say, you say, Allah, they say, they say Allah Ta'ala created everything. So therefore Allah loves everything. These people are confused people. We tell them, didn't Allah Ta'ala create uh, the humans, males, the, the believers and non-believers? Didn't Allah Ta'ala create the, the jinn and believers and non-believers amongst the jinn? And the lead, the father of all the jinn is Iblis. Uh, didn't Allah Ta'ala create animals, beautiful animals, horses, birds, uh, uh, camels, cows, and he created snakes, scorpions, um, rats, pigs, dogs, so Allah Ta'ala created everything. He created the different types of animals. Is it allowed to say that Allah Ta'ala created the uh, Iblis, Satan, the devil himself? Allah created him. So because he created them, Allah loves him? No. That's blasphemy to say. Allah Ta'ala does not accept Iblis and the devils. Allah Ta'ala accepts the, the believers but does not accept the blasphemers. Likewise, the animals, Allah, uh, the, the, the animals are not of the same status. 
So the animals have different uh, different status. So uh, we do not say that that snakes, rats, apes, pigs, and dogs have have a high status. Would one say that apes, dogs, and pigs are accepted by Allah? No, we would not say that. Uh, also, didn't Allah Ta'ala create um, hellfire? Didn't Allah Ta'ala said about hellfire, uh, what a, what a very bad place to end up. What a very bad place to live in. Allah Ta'ala said about hellfire that it is a bad place. It is not a place that you want to go in. Rather, Allah Ta'ala warned us not to be amongst the people of the hellfire. And we are encouraged in the religion. Allah Ta'ala has ordered us to be amongst the people of paradise. But He created hellfire and He mentioned that the the blasphemers are the fuel for par for for hellfire, and that par uh, that uh, hellfire is a bad place. So hellfire is created by Allah, but we do not say that Allah Taala accepts hellfire. One should not get confused about this. Allah Taala created everything; He does not accept. He accepts the good, and He does not accept evil although he created he created it he's the creator of good and the creator of the bad but he has ordered us to do the good and stay away from the bad the bad would not exist except if Allah Ta'ala willed for it to exist and he created it and it happens with his knowledge so some questions and answer occurred uh, some uh, Asked, well, what about the prayer? You know, uh, if the, the tarawih, Ramadan is coming, Salatul Tarawih, that we pray, that 20 rakahs that we pray uh, uh, as optional. What about this prayer? If somebody does has qada, can they pray Salatul Tarawih? Uh, the answer is no, except, except some Hanafi scholars, they consider it wajib. So wajib is something that is a type of an obligation. So just keep that in mind. But um, the correct saying is that Salat al is, is, uh, is, is not wajib, it's sunnah. Some scholars did say that, some Hanafi scholars said that. Keep that in mind. Uh, praying the sunnah does not replace a makeup prayer, an obligatory makeup prayer. No matter how many sunnahs you do, it will not take make it up. Some people say that there is a prayer that if you do it at a specific time, at a specific place, in a specific way, then you will have five, uh, equal to four thousand, five thousand makeup prayers. And obviously, this this is not the case. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said. من نام عن الصلاة أو نسيها فليصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك. The one who the one who fell asleep or he forgot to pray, let him pray when he remembered. There is nothing else that he can do to substitute that except to make it up. So we're talking about the one who does not pray and he's not sinful because he's, he fell asleep. He woke up, the time of the prayer was gone. Or he forgot. Out of the mercy of Allah, in this nation, if a, pers a person does one of those two, he's not going to be held accountable. He's not sinful for that, from the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. So in this case, this person does something and he's not sinful, Still, the Prophet told him he cannot do anything to substitute that except to make that up. He doesn't have to pay any expiation or anything else. 
He cannot do anything else to substitute except to make that up. What about the one who left his prayer and he's sinful for leaving it out? The other one, he had an excuse. He fell asleep, he woke up, he has an excuse. So still the Prophet said he has to make it up. What about the one who d did not have an excuse and he can committed a major sin for not praying? In this case, do we, do we say that he doesn't have to make it up? No. He has to make it up and nothing else was substitute for that. No sunnah prayer or, no, uh, or anything else. He has to make that <laughs> prayer up. What about the fact if a person prays two days worth of makeups for each day, can he do other optional prayers after that? According to the Maliki scholars, yes. So they said the bare minimum for you to do to be safe is for you to do 10 prayers in each day. <clears throat> that means two days worth of prayers for each day, the 10 uh, prayers of makeup prayers for each day. <clears throat> so that means, let's say, if a person has years of, of makeup, then all they do is make up two days of makeups <coughs> while performing that day's prayer he also does two days of makeups and then he will be safe <coughs> this is according to Imam Malik so by them saying he will be safe that means he can do other dhikr he can do other things uh, optional and he would not be uh, sinful for that in the Shafi school, you know that he has to make it up, immediately make it up now. Spend all his time making up the prayers, <coughs> other than the time he needs for eating, drinking, sleeping, you know, base, bare necessities. No, without an excuse. With an excuse, we're going to talk about that. Actually, this is the next question. <clears throat> In the Barakallah Hafiq. So in the Hanafi school, in the Maliki school, if a person overslept, and let's say for example he woke up and morning prayer was done, the sun rose. In the, Han in the Hanafi school and in the Maliki school, he cannot pray Dhuhr until he prays Subah. So that means they, they, they said he cannot pray because he needs to pray, do the prayers in order. And Subah, he didn't pray it. So what does he have to do? He have to make that Subah prayer up. And they said he's sinful if he doesn't do that. And on top of it, they said it is a condition for the validity of Dhuhr for you to make up. If we think we're talking about he has a makeup one day's one day's makeup. Not not six or more prayers. Just if he has one day's makeup, he has to keep it in order. So if he only has one day of makeup, let's say he slept twenty four hours. He woke up, he missed the entire day of prayer. So he makes it up in that order. And they said it's a condition that he does it in that order. So each prayer he goes in order. So um, so they said you must you must pray the subah for example in this example the subah before the dhuhr and not only that they said it is a condition for the validity of dhuhr so they said if somebody does it their dhuhr is invalid as for the shafi school as we know that uh, if he if he uh, left it out with a religious excuse he has to make it up during his lifetime. And it would be disliked for him to pray dhuhr without praying the subah, but not haram. It would be disliked. As for the other two imams, they said it is a condition. He must. He must pray the subah before he prays the dhuhr. In this example, 
and it, it is conditioned also for the validity of Zuhr. So the, the hadith, in continuation of that hadith, An Abi Hurairata, radiyallahu anhu, qal, Abu Huraira, may Allah raise his rank, said, qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira narrated from the Prophet alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, that he said, that Allah said, Inna Allah Ta'ala qal, that the Prophet said, that Allah Ta'ala said, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb, wa ma taqarraba ilayya abidi bi shay'in ahabba ilayya mimma iftaradtu alayh, wa la yaza, wa la yazalu abidi yataqarrabu ilayya bin nawafil hatta uhibbah, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطِشُ بِهِ وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا وَلَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأَعْطِيَنَّهُ وَلَئِنْ إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ رواه البخاري So this is the entire hadith. That we mentioned, we're going to mention. Uh, and the beginning of it, the uh, the beginning of the hadith starts with what Allah Taala said: "Man aada li waliyan, faqad aadantuhu bil harb." We'll discuss this part, which means the one who displays enmity to a wali of Allah, let him know that Allah will punish him severely. The one who displays enmity. To one of the awliya, let him know that he will be punished severely. From this it is known, known that it is an enormous sin, it is a major sin to display enmity towards a wali. We do not mean to have a dispute with that wali over a worldly matter. So let's say this male or a female was a wali. And another person who is a regular Muslim, he's not a wali. They had a dispute over some item, a sword or this or that. Who, be, who does this be, item belong to? So, uh, this Muslim, he said, it belongs to me. Here's my proof that this belongs to me. And that wali said, no, it belongs to me. Then they had an argument, meaning dispute. They said, no, 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 he, each one is not accepting the proof of the other. Then they, he took it to the judge. This Muslim, he took that wali to the judge. And the judge heard their case. We're not talking about this case. There's no, this is not displaying enmity towards a wali over a worldly matter. <clears throat> Rather, to display enmity against a wali is like the incident, incident narrated from Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas who is one of the ten best companions, the ten that received the, the revelation that they will be in paradise while they were alive. One time he was in Medina in a place called Ahjaru Zayt. Ahjaru Zayt literally translating means the rocks of the olive oil tree. Ahjaru, it's the name of the place. He was in this place. So he saw a man riding a, an animal. And he was, there was people gathered around him. And he was talking to the people. So uh, Sa'ad um, ibn Abi Waqqas, radiallahu anhu, may Allah raise his rank, said, what is that man saying? And someone told him, Oh, he is cussing Ali radiallahu anhu. And this incident occurred after the death of Ali radiallahu anhu. After the caliphate of Ali radiallahu anhu. He heard, he saw this man, people are gathered, it happened in the Umayyad caliphate's time. The, the Umayyads in English? 
What do they call it in English? The, um, um, the Umayyads, I think. Umayyads, they say. During their caliphate, they had several caliphs, which is the range of those caliphates. It's called the Umayyad Caliphate. Uh, during that time, Sa'd ibn, Abi, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas saw that man cussing Ali. And you know Ali is one of the, the best and greatest of all the awliya. He is the fourth best of all the companions and this was he, he had already passed away so Sa'ad when he saw that he went he came closer to that man he, when he got close to him and he told him how do you say that about Ali anhu, and he is the first to embrace Islam meaning he's amongst the first to embrace Islam he's the first boy to embrace Islam so and he is, he is married to the daughter of, of the Prophet ﷺ. And he carried the banner of the Prophet ﷺ in different ghazawat. And, and he is this, and he is that. He continued to mention the, the, the status of Ali anhu to this man. And then he raised his hand in dua, in supplication. And you know Sa'ad, he was known that his supplication was accepted. He was known for that. So he raised his hand in supplication to Allah and he made the supplication against that man. He said, He said, O oh Allah, if this person is cussing a wali or cursing a wali of yours, then let us not part be before we see the traces of your power. Basically, he was saying, Oh Allah, punish this man for what he's doing. He said, Oh Allah, if he is cussing one of your awliya, then let us not part except we, before we see the traces of your power. And immediately, the animal threw him off his back and and what is the name of the place ahjar as we call it ahjar al-zayt ahjar al-zayt that means there was rocks there right so he fell and he hit his head on a rock and split his head in two and he died so when we said showing enmity to a wali is like that not over a worldly matter he said, you know, they had a business relationship and, you know, he says this, he said that. Uh, 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 not going beyond the bounds of the religion. We're not talking about that. But rather something like this. Or what is what, uh, over religious matter or uh, something like that. The person would uh, show enmity towards the wali. Uh, then let him be prepared for the torture in this life before he receives the severe torture in the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala said Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb That person will get a severe punishment. The one who does that to one of the awliya of Allah Ta'ala. And we will end on, uh, on that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen صلى الله على سيدنا محمد طه الأمين لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم